Hi. In this film, I'm going to transfer my tracing onto the lino for my first block. And I just wanted to talk to you briefly about some ideas for cutting and where I go for inspiration. So we go back to um, the setup. I've got my registration device here. I've got one with a bench hook. So the bench hook is against the desk to hold it firm. And we do both now on my website. We do them with bench hooks and without bench hooks. So inside the device, I've got my lino, which is all stained. And if you watch the last episode, um, you'll see that it was all lined up as well. And my tracing is in place and that tracing is face down. So the drawn side is against the lino so that the image is reversed and the print, when it's printed, will come out the, 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 in the right orientation, the way that I've drawn my image. So I'm going to take some carbon paper, and this is double-sided carbon paper. If you've got um, single-sided carbon paper, then it's, it's the shiny side down to the lino you want. And I'm just going to put that back down and take my tracing. So I'm going to work on this block here. And this is the detail block. It's got the frame around the top. And um, I've done all these separations so that I can show you. Normally, if I was doing something like this, because I do it in Japanese wood block a lot, I would hold all the information about which block I was working on in my head. But if it helps you to do a color grid or something that, you know, a series of colored in bits to show yourself where you're working, then, you know, it it's it's fine um, so I know that's the area I'm going to work in so I'm just going to take a tracing with a pencil and the pencil I'm using is a hard one so I've got a 4H pencil here which will give me a nice crisp line to transfer so I'm just going to start transferring those bits that I know I need And when it comes to the tree here, I'm going to, you can see the block is the whole of the tree, but I am going to transfer all these guidelines, not because I'm going to religiously follow them as a cutting guide, but it just gives me an idea of where the shadow areas and the bright areas are. So I can use that to guide me when I'm cutting away. So now I've made my tracing of my first block, um, there are a couple of things to say about it. The first is that I've made a little adjustment to the frame. I had a bit of excess lino just here that is going to come off and straighten up. And I've also, I went a little bit wrong there, so I've drawn another line just to straighten my frame up. So this white pencil that I'm using is a China graph. It's a, it's a sort of waxy pencil for marking uh, paper or glass or plastic or metal. And um, I, I use them a lot because they're very clear to mark lino with. So I can use it to show which bits are coming out, for example. And China Graph wipes off really easily with a, ra a damp rag, so it's not going to permanently mark the lino. So you can draw with it and then wipe off and draw with it and wipe off. So I quite often use it when I'm marking up lino. And because it's white, it's also nice if, you, if you're doing reduction lino. 
um, to show you which layer to cut. If you're cutting away the palest layer and you mark it up in white, it's a good visual aid. So if you watch my other series on Lino with Laura, I, t I talk about that quite a bit while doing a reduction print. So I've made a couple of corrections. The other thing I've done, you can see that's different from my tracing is the grass in the foreground, the shadowy bit here, was I just drew around the shape in the tracing to give me a guide. But I've actually drawn lines through the carbon because probably what I will do when I cut it away, all this excess um, liner here, is to actually cut these lines as the dark bit of shadow so that it, it brings it to life and it's a, it's a nice graphic mark. So um, I've saved myself some time instead of wobbling around the edge and then drawing in the lines. I've just drawn the lines directly onto the lino and the carbon as my cutting guide. So that's a couple of things there. And um, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about are ideas for cutting for mark making. So I'm constantly looking at other work and I just wanted to recommend a couple of sources. Um, I've, I've mentioned this before, but the I've got a book of wood engravers and I find that endlessly useful for different ways of cutting and for looking at how to balance light and dark. So wood engravers are always good to look at. Um, travel posters, again, I find a lot of inspiration. This book, uh, The Golden Age of Railway Posters, is quite nice. It's quite snide as well. They're quite witty in the, the comments. Um, but here you can see posters like this are quite nice looking at how that foliage has been dealt with. Um, so, you know, books like that I go to quite a lot. Um, shout out for a friend of mine. I, I have taught with this book forever. And uh, Ian Phillips is a very, very uh, accomplished liner cut artist. And he um, works with landscapes of Wales mostly. He's also a member of Pine Faroda Group who do amazing large scale lino and woodblock prints. So his book is marvellous. He's very, very inventive with his cutting. And um, also these prints are quite big. They're, um, I guess about A2 sort of size. And these are all done by hand using uh, rubbing the back of the print to take the impression. So I really recommend his little book uh, it's called Drawing the Line, and I think you can get it from his website, and his website is Relief Print, I think. But Ian Phillips, you'll find it, I'm sure. And then, finally, um, I should give a shout out for Pressing Matters magazine. This is a lovely magazine, and it's full of really lovely printmaking, relief and intaglio printmaking, all sorts of printmaking. And I find that really inspiring. It comes out uh, once a quarter and there's always something new to see and there are always some lovely ideas to look at. So that's just a, a sort of snapshot into um, places that you can look to get ideas. So I'm looking all the time for inspiration with my cutting. So after a couple of cups of tea and spending some time working on my blocks. I've got all four blocks traced using my master tracing. So at no point have I moved this tracing from this position. So I've just been moving the blocks in and out of the device. The tracing stays in the same place. So everything is, is being transferred without any movement. And you'll see from my tracing that I've done a lot of drawing onto it as well. So if I go over to my blocks, so now I've got my, my four blocks. Um, actually, the interesting ones are the pale green and the, and the green. Um, so with this one, the bit that um, is going to come out is here and out for the sky. And these bits are staying in. And I've decided that I want some of that pale green to come into the foreground. So I've uh, marked out this bit as I was going along. Now, if you watch Lino with Laura, the first series, you'll know that I'm incapable of just working to plan and not changing things. So, 
you know that's the way it goes but what I have done is to mark out the daisies in that bit of pale green and they're exactly the same in this darker green that's going to sit with that so in the foreground where there are daisies here there are daisies here and so I will get white daisies in that foreground so now all of these have been marked out with the carbon paper and you can see the carbon paper on there I've got my basic blocks marked out and the next thing to do is to look at some mark making think about how I want to cut these blocks and carry on from there. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and you'll join me again.